Here is a multiple choice question on the graph of polynomial functions. Question number one. Which of the following statements is not true for the polynomial of degree 10? A. It will have maximum 10 x-intercepts. B. It will have minimum 1 turning point. C. It will have 4 x-intercepts and D is it will have 4 turning points. You can pause the video, answer the question and then look into my solution. So to solve this, let us assume that the leading coefficient is negative. Let's, let's say leading coefficient, let's say a of n is less than 0. That means it is negative. Okay. So based on this, I will actually show all types of possibilities. There are four different cases. So let's try to take them one by one. First one, it will have maximum 10 x-intercepts. Well, that's correct. If the, the degree is 10, leading coefficient is negative, means the right side is down, right? So maximum could be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, kind of like this. Do you understand? So the number of x-intercepts could be all linear, and that will result into the first case so that is true it will have minimum one turning point since the graph of the function has to go both will be facing the same sides we are taking leading coefficient negative so maybe from this to kind of like this one turning point do you see that so in this case we are assuming this to be x to the power of 10 with a negative leading coefficient so that gives you the situation where there's minimum one turning point. Next, we have a case that it can have four x-intercepts. Well, that's easy to sketch, four x-intercepts. So, so we could have something like this, one, two, three. So, so we have one, two, three, and this one is the fourth one, right? Four x-intercepts. So it could be like this. You can see that the graph goes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. The only thing to worry about is the degree. So we can say this is linear. So degree is 1, for example. Here also it is 1. Now, but these two combinations could give us 10. For example, this could be of order 4, and that could be of order 4 also, right? So 4 and 4, 8, 9 and 1, 10. So you could have something like this. Okay, so that gives you four x-intercepts. Now the last part is that it can have four turning points. Now let's look into this part. Four turning points means we have to start from here, right, and end there. So let's talk about turning points. If I turn once, I have to turn, I go this side, that's fine. But if I turn the second time, I'm actually going to quadrant 1, but I have to come to quadrant 4. So I have to turn again, right? Now, that means 1, 2, 3. It cannot have two turns. 1, 2, 3. And if I turn once again, this is my fourth turn, right? 1, second turn, third turn, and fourth turn. But if I turn, I'm landing up in quadrant 1, but I have to land up in quadrant 4. So that means I have to again turn, right? So I cannot have four turns, I'll have five turns. So the last statement here is incorrect. It can have four turns, no. It can only have odd number of turns, right? So the net shell is that it can have either one turn, three turn, five, seven or nine turns, turning points. So only odd turning points. It cannot have even number of turning points and therefore option D is the right option. So I hope the concept is clear, right? So we'll take up similar questions relating to the graph of polynomials 
and I hope that will give you a good concept about the topic. Now here is question number two on polynomial functions graph. Which of the following statements is not true for a polynomial of degree 9? So this time we are looking at odd degree function, right? Odd degree. Degree 9. We again have four points. We'll actually sketch four different graphs to illustrate why something is correct or incorrect. A. It will have maximum of 9 terms. Well, that is correct. 9 degree function could have line, linear factors. Correct? So that is fine. So we could have something like this. Uh, since it is degree 9, it has to, if I start from here, it is going to end there. So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1, 9, right? So that works. Second, it will have minimum 1x intercepts. That is right. It could go like this, x to the power of 9, positive leading coefficient, 1x intercept. Now, since you have to move from quadrant 3 to 4, at least once you are going to cross the x-axis. So, minimum 1x-intercept is correct. Now, it will have local maximum or minimum at a point where the slope of the tangent is 0. So, if you look at a graph, let's say, let me just make one more here. Uh, let's say we have something like this, right? So we have something graph like this. Now, as you can see, slope of the tangent is zero here, zero there. This is uh, local maximum. This one is local minimum. But how about origin? Here also, the slope of the graph is zero, but it is none, right? So we could have point of inflection like shown here also. Do you see that? Point of inflection. It is neither a maximum nor a minimum. But the slope is, is zero, right? It's a horizontal line which is tangent at origin in this case, right? Therefore, C is incorrect. Now, D is correct. Odd degree function will have even number of turning points. If you are starting from here and ending there, if you turn once, you have to turn second time, right? So, so you only have odd number of turning points. Do you see that? For making this statement true. Many of these will be of degree, you know, if it is like one shown here, or linear, or maybe, maybe kind of like this, right? So, it will have odd number of turning points. Now, it will have, so as you can see, it will have even number of turning points, right? Never an odd number of turning points. So all of the statements are true. The only incorrect statement is that whenever you have zero slope of a tangent line, then it is not necessary that it will be a local maximum or minimum. It could be point of inflection as shown in this particular example. So I hope that helps. Let's move on and take some more questions on the graph of polynomial functions. Question number three here is polynomial with zeros at minus three order two, minus one order four, and two will have three x intercepts, four turning points, degree of seven, domain and range of all real numbers. You can pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Now, if you draw this graph you might get your answer but it's kind of difficult so let me show you first with the help of a graph polynomial with zeros at minus three so we have this zero at minus three which is of order two so it's going to turn here so let's say it turns here right then at minus one order two so at minus one again it turns let's say this is minus three this is minus one and at two so 2 is a linear graph, so it will cross, right? So the graph will look something like this. 
where this point is at 2. Now let's look into the options provided to us. 3 x intercepts, right? So 1, 2, 3, that is correct. 4 turning points, 1, 2, 3, 4, that is correct. Degree of 7. Now some of you will just add this up, we'll say 2 plus 4 plus 1, which is 7, and think this is correct. The last part is domain range of all real numbers. Yes, that is correct. Now, which one is the option which could be wrong? The option which is wrong is C. Actual statement is minimum degree of 7. Do you see that? It could have some other roots also, complex conjugate roots, right? So it could have so the degree could be 7, 9, 11 and so on. You get my point. <clears throat> Depending on the other roots, we could have imaginary roots right so we could have imaginary zeros that is kind of very important to understand so that is why c is wrong so this is an extremely important question i hope you understand and appreciate it thanks for watching and feel free to write your comments and share your views now at the end of these questions i have taken up question number four where we will sketch a polynomial y equals to one over four x squared times x squared minus 4 times 1 minus x whole cube. The idea is to consolidate our learning on graphing polynomial functions. So we are given this equation which could be further factored and written as 1 over 4 x squared. Now x squared minus 4 can be written as x plus 2 times x minus 2 and here we have uh, it's better to write x first, right? So here we have x minus 1 whole cube. Now as soon as you flip it, it becomes minus outside, so it becomes negative. Do you see that part? So <clears throat> it's important to understand this factor. Now this could be written as minus of x minus 1 whole cube, which is negative x minus 1 whole cube, right? That gives you this negative number. Now it is extremely important to notice the factor written in this manner. Otherwise, you're going to get your graph wrong. So that is why I've taken this question here, right? Now let's sketch it. You can actually now pause the video, sketch the function, and then look into my suggestions. Now I think it's simpler. So what we have here is degree of how much? Let's count. So we have degree of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And leading coefficient a n is less than 0. Now 7 means opposite ends. And this means right down. Correct? So the end behavior of the function is kind of like this. Does make sense, right? Let us also calculate the y-intercept. So the value of this function at 0 is minus 1 over 4. If I write 0 here, I get, I mean, 2. Uh, so this is 0, right? So it is 0 times, it is 0. So it is 0, right? So it goes through origin. Okay. So it is origin. Okay. So we have a 0 at 0 itself. Then we have 0 at minus 2, 1, 0 at plus 2, and then at plus 1. So these are the zeros for us. The order of the 0 here is 2. Since we are moving from this side, this is linear, so it will go straight. Here it is order 2, it is going to turn, and at 1 it is cubic, so it is going to go like this and then turn again leading to this n, correct? So we could actually sketch our graph as
<coughs> like this, right? So that becomes the graph of the given function. So I hope that makes sense. Key is to understand and appreciate that 1 minus x squared leads to a leading coefficient which is negative, right? So I hope with this, you have clear understanding of how to sketch polynomial functions when given in factored form and how to find the characteristics of these functions if the information about their zeros is provided. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.